to have the first five minute sermon ever. <laughs> Just don't fall out of the pew. First John chapter four, verse 11 to the end of the chapter. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. No man has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us. And his love is perfected in us. Hereby know we that we dwell in him and he in us, because he hath given us of his spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. Whoso Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwelleth in him, and he in God. We have known and believed the love that God hath to us. God is love, and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. Herein is our love made perfect that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear, because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. We, loved him, we love him because he first loved us. If a man say, I love God, and hateth his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he hath not seen? And this is the commandment. Have we from him, that he who loveth God loveth his brother also. So you may think that the title would have something to do with love, but it doesn't. The title is, what type are you? What type are you? Many diets out there tell you that you have to be, a, you know, if you're a certain type, this is the kind of food you should eat. If you're shaped like a pear, you gotta eat this way. You know, if you're shaped like a cucumber, you gotta eat this way. If you're shaped like an apple, you gotta eat this way. I mean, there's, you know, a multitude of doctors have gone through it and said, well, the best way to lose weight is you gotta find out what your type is. But in finding out your type, when it comes to a diet, there's so many good foods that are eliminated. And I think that eventually it becomes harmful to the person. No nightshade vegetables. See. Well, there's a lot of nightshade vegetables that you really need. So as we go through this, we're going to kind of go along with what we talked about this morning already. So consider what type are you? And I pretty much know what type you are. And I know at one time we had the other type. We don't have that type here no more. So there are two types of people in the world. Someone once said, those who come into a room and say, here I am. And those who come in and say, Ah, oh, there you are. How different are those two approaches? One says, look at me. I need attention. The other says, tell me about yourself. One says, I'm important. The other says, you are important. One says, the world revolves around me. The other says, I'm here to serve you. Wouldn't it be great to be known as the second kind of person someone 
others love to have around? Well, that's the kind of person we ought to be. The kind of person that others love to have around. Someone who displays the love of Christ openly and unashamedly. The New Testament gives us some practical suggestions about becoming the kind of person who demonstrates Christ's love. So we're going to go through some various, various scriptures to finish this out. I only have one point. As we've seen in Philippians, Paul's attitude, and that's my first point, putting others first. Putting others first. Romans 12, 10. We are told to give preference to one another. Romans 12, 10 says, Be kindly affectionate one to another with brotherly love in honor, preferring one another. That's a very good trait. If you prefer to be here than somewhere else, then that's good. God knows that. God is aware of your attitude toward him, toward others. In fact, not too long ago, I preached a sermon on that we're saved for others. We're saved for others. Not just saved for ourselves, we're saved for others because what is the gospel if it's not to tell others about Jesus Christ? Secondly, edify one another. Look at Romans 14. Romans chapter 14 and verse 19. Edify one another. Paul told there, the church there, let us therefore follow after the things which make for peace and things wherewith one may edify another. Should never be a harsh word spoken to anybody here. I mean, there really shouldn't ever be that. And the Christian that supposedly Christian that does that, something wrong in their life. That they can, you know, not what I would say, lose their temper. First Corinthians twelve twenty five. 1 Corinthians 12, 25 deals with care for one another. Care for one another. Paul told the church at Corinth there that there should be no schisms in the body, but that the members should have the same care one for another. Same care. What you care for me should be cared for the other ones that are here, vice versa. I mean, there shouldn't be no separation there. But others, they want to hold grudges and, and you know, they just can't get over those kind of things. And it just doesn't make any sense to me. One of the things about being a Christian is to be able to forgive and forget about it. I mean, that's what God says, you know, it's behind me. You know, I'll, I'll turn and look at it no more. We should do the same thing. Galatians 5.13. Galatians 5.13. So Paul's telling the church here, Galatia, that serve one another. Serve one another. For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. Now we have liberties. I mean, you know, the liberty is that, you know, we all maybe don't see things exactly as someone else does. And you have the liberty to do that. I mean, some may think that, oh, there's no problem or nothing wrong with like do doing Christmas. You know, coloring eggs. Doing, they have the liberty to do that. 
Because they don't have to answer to me. See, they have to answer to God over things that, of that nature if they think that there's nothing wrong with that. You know, I have people all the time, oh, I never, I never heard that before. Well, you can't say that anymore, see. Because I just told you. It's your choice. You want to continue to do them, it's your choice. You have the liberty to do that. But even though you have the liberty, don't use the liberty for an occasion to the flesh. Don't do it and rub it in the noses of your brothers and sisters. But by love, serve one another. And don't put a stumbling block in another's way. If a person doesn't believe it, then leave it there. If a person believes it, leave it there. You know, I would think by now the church knows the stance, my stance, the church should be their stance as well when it comes to certain things. But we should not, you know, rub that in one another's faces and pray for them that the Lord would bring them to the same understanding that you did. I mean, I came to it. it took me a while, but I did come to it. After fighting with my brother over the situation, not my maternal brother, because I'm a maternal brother, but my spiritual church brother, I had a, we had a pretty good falling out over it. And finally, the Lord brought me to my senses. It all comes down to, you better have the reason. You better have the reason. And you better have the proof of the reason. I don't make idle statements. I don't make statements off the top of my head. I make statements that I have studied and looked into. Then I can make those statements because I have looked into it. A lot of people have never looked into it. See, that's what drives me insane. They just don't look into it. I don't understand that. If you want to know something, whether it's right or whether it's wrong, don't you think that you have the obligation and the liberty to study it, to find out what is true? Amen. So, I mean, that's where our part in it is. You can sit there in that pew all day long and say, well, I don't believe that when I have proof that, oh, but that's the truth, see? So we need to be careful Galatians 6, 2. I almost can't do this one anymore because people can't keep their mouth shut. I don't mean to put it bluntly, but that's about what it amounts to. Paul told the church there again, bear one another's burdens. Bear ye one another's burdens and so fill the law of Christ. But instead of bearing the burden, we want to go, oh, look what they did. I'd never do that. Oh, yeah, you would. <laughs> Given the same opportunity, you would do it. You can, you know, you can claim it all you want. Well, I'll never do that. Well, you don't want to ever say never because eh, you're opening yourself up. You're sinners saved by grace. There isn't anything that couldn't happen. And I mean anything. You know, I'm hearing more and more about these really good men. Supposedly, I don't know them. Well, he was the best father. He was the best husband. He was the best, you know, churchgoer, best Christian. Now he's gay. Don't ever say it can't happen. You can't say it can't happen to me. I'd never do that. Well, I hope you never do. But we need to help that person. So I don't know what the outcome is of these guys that are doing all this garbage and stuff like that. I don't know if the church is talking to them or, you know, they're laughing in behind themselves or, you know, they're making fun of them and they should be going to them and talking to them. My opinion is if a person's lost, they're going to have those feelings. 
And I can't believe if they're saved that they're going to have those feelings, that they would act on them. Colossians 3.13 Paul tells the church at Colossae, forgive one another. He says, therefore, bearing one another and forgiving one another, if any man hath a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. Well, I can tell you that doesn't happen. It's not happening. We've got too many grudging people that are Christians, I, don't know, I believe they're Christians, and hold grudges. They can't get past it. And I think it's a horrible sin when you can't get past that. We all are gonna make mistakes. We're all gonna do something that's not gonna please every single person. I've always said this, that a church member, a pastor can do the best of things. I mean, he can just be, you know, just a delight to everybody. Or we have a member that's just a delight to everybody, but that person steps out of line one time and they're, they're done. I don't believe in that. Something's wrong. Something happened. Something needs to be addressed. Comfort one another. Forgive one another. You may find yourself in the same situation one day. 1 Thessalonians 5.11. 1 Thessalonians 5.11. Comfort one another. Comfort one another. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another even as also ye do. A brother or sister is in difficulties. We need to comfort them. I think there's too many Christians right now that are in a gall of bitterness. A gall of bitterness. They're so bitter. They can't see their way through to get themselves straightened out. They're just so bitter. It doesn't matter what it is that they're just in a gall of bitterness. So they take it out on everybody else. And then the last one, James 5, 16. And you have to ask yourself, which one of these are you? 516, pray for one another. Do you pray for each other on a daily basis? I hope you do. James 516 says, confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. See, if you pray for one another, Lord's going to answer you. He's going to help you. Now, again, the problem with confessing your faults one to another is that I think sin is so great in our churches today and in many people's lives that I don't think that they can confess their faults because, again, we can't keep our mouth shut. If we could come and confess our faults to one another and be able to talk about it and comfort one another and forgive one another, how much things would better be. But we just don't seem to be able to keep quiet. And that's a tragedy. But you can't come to one another and talk about things without somebody else finding out. There should be only one kind of Christian. The love one another kind. So what type are you? Lord, teach us the secret of loving. The love you are asking today. 
then help us to love one another. For this we most earnestly pray. People with a heart for God have a heart for people. May God bless his word to your heart today.